I like to play this with all my guests. Wikipedia fact or fiction? I'm going to go through your Wikipedia page, and you'll tell me if these are actually true or not. All right. <laughs> you stumbled into mixed martial arts by accident after a friend convinced you to do it for fun <laughs> and that you needed the money. Yeah, I needed a I, – I was walking to the gym, and my boy Jason Nicholson, who ended up being my manager, he goes, what are you doing, man? I said, man, I need to, I need to do some roofing or cut some grass. My car broke down. I don't have a car. And I was walking a couple miles to work out. He said, won't you fight? I was like, no, nah, man, I don't like to fight. I haven't fight since sixth grade. He said, they'll give you $600. I said, sign me up. <laughs> and that was it. But he didn't tell me it was three and three. Bass said, he, <laughs> he, I didn't know I had to win the other $300. Now, see, that, so was, that, was, that was the second thing. It says he took an exhibition fight for $200. So that was that's an incorrect? No, that, that price wrong. It was, it was three and three. And I made six hundred dollars that night, and I bought a Mustang with that six hundred dollars. Now I am on a quest to fix all these Wikipedia pages. Um, it says after the Ultimate Fighter, you were close to signing with Bellator and taking part in their first middleweight tournament. Yeah, I was negotiating with them. I didn't like the negotiations. I think Bellator is a great organization, but I was a UFC guy. And I did the Ultimate Fighter. I did the UFC, and I just wanted—I didn't want to bounce around from organization to organization. I did always want to fight in Japan. I fulfilled that dream. But other than that, in America, I just want to stick with the UFC. You know, I didn't want to go. If, if, I don't want to be in the Bellator wanting to get to the UFC. You know, yeah. that, that's not what the type of organization they are. They're the type of, if you go there, you need to stay there because they're, they're establishing their own name. And I just wasn't a Bellator guy as far as, you know, in my, in my heart, I wanted to be in the UFC. Sure. It says that um, you used the money from your first fight to buy a ragged Mustang to get around town. That's raggedy. Raggedy <laughs> Mustang. It was raggedy as hell. One door didn't open, the windows didn't roll down, the heat didn't work, the AC didn't work, the windshield wipers didn't work. Uh, my door was the only door that worked, and if you pulled up on it with pliers, but I, it, it drove. <laughs> so it got me to working back. Let's see, what else is there? Oh, you got your shot in the UFC after calling into MMA Junkie Radio when Dana White was on there, and you uh, changed your voice, praising yourself in the third person before IDing yourself. Well, what I did was I called and said, hello there, mate. This is uh, so-and-so from England, and I think that you should bring that Joe Harris card back. He was awesome. And he goes, yeah, that Joe Harris guy, I remember him? And I said, man, this is Joe, man. And the whole studio just busted out laughing. <laughs> Now, mind you, I called about 50 times in a row to get through. And I got through, and I'm, it's ringing. I said, we got the hold. I was like, what am I going to do? And I just, it just came. I do prank calls like Ricky. Yeah. And I was like, I can't just call and beg to get back in. So the prank stuck with him. He texted me. And uh, you know what? A week later, he said, uh, i never forget. He texted me about a week later and said, I'm on it, bro. First of all, I was like, bro, why don't you call me bro? Man? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then a week after that, I uh, I was signed because I had just knocked out Nissan Osternek, and I took a last second fight on six like six day notice, man. And that was it. I was supposed to fight Mike Mascenzio. Mike Mascenzio pulled out, and then I fought a guy named John Salter, and he was really tough, two time NCAA champion. We had no people thought the fight was slow, but hell, here, here let me tell you something about my UFC career that people don't understand. This is a top level. This is like playing an NBA game against a team that you've never seen play before. Yeah, I have no video. I have nothing to prepare for. I had, all I knew was John Salter was a wrestler. Mario Miranda was like 10-0. and 0, And David Branch was a boxer and a black belt. I had no video. Then I get Malcolm Falco, who's like 22-3 and 3, with 21 knockouts, with no video. There was no video on Falco. None. And I'm like, I got to fight these guys blind, but they got video on me. So that was why I was so hesitant when I fought. I, don't, I didn't know if Falco was a southpaw orthodox. Strong right hand, good kicks, good technique. I'm nothing. That's hard, man. Yeah. Salter, very underrated. He's won like six of his last seven, and he's fighting. I know he's fighting for Bellator in a few weeks against one of their former champions, uh, Brandon Halsey. Uh, and finally, yeah. last one we'll leave you with. It says that after the Ultimate Fighter, you went to train with Rampage for five weeks in Liverpool, England. Yeah. Um,. Man, Rampage is... Let me tell you something about Rampage, man. They probably won't ever hear this interview. Rampage is literally like a big brother to me. Um, especially after I lost my oldest brother. 
Red Page is probably six months older than me, but he took me under his wing, and the guy took care of me. I mean, it wasn't I, – and he knew I was never using him. I was always I was always there for the guy. If he needed me, I just – I call him. We still talk to this day. We text, we Facebook. That's my friend, man. I consider him a brother for real. Not because of what he did for me, because of the way he treated me. He just saw a lot of him in me, yeah. you know, and I've always been there for him. You know, and he's a funny dude. He's been through a lot. Uh, I just stay in touch. I don't ask him for anything. You know, he's just a great guy, man. Rampage is probably one of the realest friends I got, and I do thank that guy for everything he's done for me. I went, I helped him with his wrestling, you know, as far as takedown defense. And I was a southpaw, and he was, you know, he had a fight, a couple people that were, you know, possibly southpaws. And uh, he just, man, he just always took care of me. I, uh, he just took me under his wing. He didn't have to. You know, after the show, he could have said, peace out. Yeah, I remember he, him. He really. I remember him publicly putting on Twitter a, a tweet to you where he asked you to come and train with one of his teammates uh, a few years ago. I remember seeing that. I thought that was really cool. I went to Liverpool, and then I went to Big Bear and helped him train. And I, I've all, and, and you know what? He hired me as an assistant. I washed his clothes. I folded up his, you know, had his. Every time he went to practice, I had his bag ready. I mean, I worked my ass off, and and I, and I didn't ask him to pay me. I said, "Don't pay me." I said, I "Just I owe the guy, man. You, yeah. He flew me to England. You know what I'm saying?" So I said, "Can I do something? Let me be your assistant. You know, kind of like the the wingman. You know?" Yeah. 